I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, God loves you. And not only does he love you, he's manifesting his love for you today. I want you to say it with me. Say today, God is manifesting his love for me. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? I told you yesterday, increase your thinking. It is the same God. He will meet all that need. Every bill is going to be paid. Nothing is going to be cut short. Nothing is going to reduce in your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say, Father. No, say it. Say it with all confidence. Say, Father. I demand today for my daily bread. It's coming to me. Lord, you have given angels charge concerning me. And they keep me in all my ways. They see to it that provision is given me today. And that I receive it in Jesus' name. I receive every provision from heaven today. Amen. Praise God. Now that's it. That's it. I am here. David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Keep your mind on that truth. Keep your mind on him. He is your shepherd. And hey, he's not limited by the economy of your nation. He's not limited by the foolishness of the government. No. He's not affected by their greed. He's not affected. God doesn't sit down in heaven and say, ah, what is the cost of food now? Woo! Ah. Things are difficult too. <laughs> God does that. Ah, no, 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 no way, no way, no way. I remember, we are the salt of the earth. Let that become your consciousness. We are, I am salt. Salt gives taste. Salt preserves. So why I know my nation is not going to go down completely is because I'm here. Oh, because I'm here. So I know. No matter how tough. Now, now someone say, eh, eh, because of what, things should always be sweet. Now, no, no, no. That's not how life is. You can't stop the flow of ups and downs in life. Now, someone say, I know my life can never go down. Hey, hey, hey. It doesn't. Don't confess that. Listen. Listen. That is the truth about life. It's the truth about life. Everything goes up and comes down that's just how life was designed by god if you have not known this truth yes you're in big trouble <laughs> god. now it doesn't mean when things go down you are going down with it no that's why david asked that question i lift up my eyes onto the hills then he said from where does my help come from he said not the hills my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He is constant. And he is higher than the hills. So when I'm on the mountain top, he is my helper. If I come down to the valley, he is my helper. I know some Christians don't want to confess, no, I, I don't go to the valley. I never go to the valley. Now, now, when we talk, now, now sometimes, you know, faith preachers teach people, to think that way now you see it's wrong it's wrong that mentality is wrong rather teach people that God is with you David said even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death you see that now because he was not in control of that valley he was not in control of the topography of the road. But there is one constant thing 
you are with me. Hallelujah. Praise God. So whether we're on the mountain, he's with me. Whether we're in the valley, he's with me. So I don't get scared when the valley time comes. I don't get scared when we have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't get scared. But when you teach people to say, that there is no valley in my life, but that is just how life is designed. So when they are now descending down the valley, they don't know how to operate in that season. They begin to feel God has left them. If God have not left me, why would I be here? You see that now? So let's just teach people the truth. Valley times will come. See that? So don't start saying, eh, if God, why didn't God stop the government from being corrupt? Why didn't God stop? This thing. We are light. We are salt. It's because of us, the whole nation is not consumed yet. <laughs> Praise God. And now, not because God is just sitting and folding. He's, he has a plan. He has a plan. Can you just relax and wait for him? He says he's manifesting his love to us. Keep your eyes on him. Let him finish what he is doing. Praise God. While he's at it, for, for the generality now. While he's at it, you take advantage of your knowledge and personal relationship with him and keep yourself on top. So when you're descending down the valley, you're like, Lord, you know you're with me going down, right? So cushion, cushion this effect of going down. And he will send you help. He will send you help. You remember, in, there was famine all over the world. And there was only food in Egypt. But hey, Jacob in that season was a man who was walking with God. He was a man whom the favor of God was upon, the hand of God was upon his life. And guess what? Joseph had the hand of God upon his life also. And Joseph was in Egypt. By his wisdom, Egypt was supposed to preserve food for the whole world for many years. But guess what? Jacob, during the season of famine, had enough money to purchase all the food they needed. You see that now? He had enough money. So God was taking care of him, even though there was a valley season. And God was taking care of Joseph and taking care of Egypt, even though there was a valley season. And that's how God takes care of us. So open your hearts and just receive from Him. Look up when things are not going well. Keep your head up. Look up to Him. Because you know why? He loves you. He loves you. I'll share with you yesterday. It doesn't matter what life throws at you. That has never been the problem. It has never been the issue. The issue has always been, what do you make out of what life throws at you? So you remember Joseph, he told his brothers. Now when they were selling him to it, they truly meant it for evil. They didn't have any revelation from God that look, I saw a vision that this is our brother will prosper in Egypt. Let's find a way for him to get to Egypt. So imagine, and then they were like, look, the only way we can think about now is to sell him. We'll sell him, they'll take him and resell him in Egypt. Yeah, I think that's it. Just anyhow, let's just get to Egypt. That was not their thoughts. Remember, they wanted to kill him at first. Then Reuben intervened and said, no, we can't kill him. He said, okay, okay, let's throw him into the pit. And then they saw the Ishmaelites passing and oh, let's sell him. And then they sold him. And you think they were just the ones that were just thinking. No, sir. God was behind it all. I said, but it's not fair now. Why would God allow Joseph to suffer all what he suffered? Okay. Why would God then allow Joseph to be so blessed that he was a point man for the whole world? You see that now? You see that now? Look at the final outcome. Sometimes we don't like to go through the process. But guess what? It is the process that makes you to be able to stand and shine in at the final outcome. When you reject the process, 
you actually reject the final outcome. Because every good product is crushed, is run through the, the heat. When gold is refined, it goes through that heat. Oh, you don't want to look at the temperature with which they heat metals to bring out, to remove every impurity. Now, you, isn't it not amazing? You heat the metals to take out the impurities in it. You see that? So when you go through the heat, what's happening to you? The impurities have been taken away from you. Why? So that you will shine at the final outcome. Some of you never knew you could hate until you are put in a situation. And then you now realize that you have bitterness in your heart. Why am I bitter about this person? No, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. I said, okay, can you? I know how God deals with us. No, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. I'm not. And then you're alone. You're praying. And then Lord begins to talk to you. Do you know you're bitter about that person? I said, Lord, no, I'm not bitter. And then I said, okay, pick up your phone and call him and bless him. Must I? Yes, I want you to do so. Then you pick up your phone and you sit down for 30 minutes wondering what to say. Okay. If I call him now, the things I'll say to him, he will not like it. <laughs> and then God says, you see, let's leave, let's try again tomorrow. I told you to call that person, you've not called him yet. He said, I know I'm supposed to call him. Hi. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't think I'm ready to call. You can be there for one month. What's going on? You're going through the fire, but you don't want to be burnt. So you don't want the impurity to drop. You're still holding on to it. Until you get to that point where you summon up courage. I say, Lord, I don't hate. Yes, I feel deceived. I feel um, blackmailed. I feel bad about this person. But this is not me. I don't hate. I won't change from who I am. So I'm going to call this person and bless the person just like you have commanded me. And say, Father, before I even call him, Lord, I release him in my heart and I bless him. I bless him. I bless him. Now, while you're saying that, you begin to see the good side of that person. And then you begin to get excited. A lot of people's lives have changed because they didn't take charge of their soul. I was speaking to a daughter of mine you know, recently and I said, hey, you know what? You know, people make up their minds in life. I'm going to be good. A lady can tell herself, I'm going to be a good wife. Oh, I'm going to be that wife. My husband will depend on me. I'm going to be that wife that um, I'm just going to do what is right. I will never lie to my husband. I will always tell him the truth. I will, I will just be a good person to him. Now you make up that decision before you got married. You just didn't know the kind of situation you will meet when you get married. So now you get married to this person. However, whether God led you in or you chose yourself, you, now you're married. And then it just happens that your husband lost his job. And now you are working, so you're the one taking care of the family. And then you're thinking, oh, I'm sure after one month, ah, I, I know my husband now. He, ah, he's good, he's good. He'll get a job, he'll get a job. One month, two months, three months, four months, five months, no job. You are the one bearing all the burden. And then suddenly, maybe someone whispered something to you. Someone may just tell you, do you know you're the one making your husband lazy? Because you're taking care of all the bills, so he's just relaxed. And then you begin to look at it and say, mm, it's true. It's true. Do you know even the charge card? My husband will call me, ah, please send me a recharge card. Or please. And then I'll do. It's not good. Now, whoever is telling you this may be coming from a good place, not like they, they, they are planning to destroy your family. They may be coming from a good but here's where the problem is. Now you're left alone and you're thinking, hmm, what do I do? I must start making, I, I shouldn't let my husband know how much I have. I shouldn't. Maybe that would inspire, maybe when I tell him that there's no money, it will inspire him to go get a job. I think that's what I'll begin to do. Now, you make money 
and then you're hiding it. And um, I need my, ah, that money I'm expecting. They've not paid it. To, ah, are you serious? Why are they delayed? Hmm. These people, don't mind them. Don't mind them. Well, I know they will pay Shah. Me, I'm not just worried. When, when it comes to, when things really get, I say, ah, but we need that money. I say, eh, hmm, hmm. Let's just pray. Oh. Now, what's going on? You are beginning to change. That's what's going on. Now you've started telling lies. You see? You've started telling lies. Two, you've started hiding things from your husband. The same things you said you were never going to do when you were much younger. Now, in your heart, you're telling yourself, I'm doing it for a good reason. I'm doing it for a good reason. But guess what's happening? You are changing. And you're not changing for good. You're changing to bad. Because now you're a liar. You're a concealer. Are you seeing he said, yeah, but what, what should I have done in that circumstances? Grow up. So how do you mean grow up? If you feel your husband is getting lazy because of this, why don't you have a talk with him? An honest talk with him. Say, honey, we need to talk. I notice you've not been on the move to get a job. And I'm beginning to feel you are too comfortable because I'm bringing in the money. So this is what we're going to do. You know, I love you. I love, I want the best for you. Read Proverbs 31 for him. He said, you know, it's my responsibility to make you not to lack. And it's also my responsibility to make you not to steal. Right? So I'm not going to make you lazy. So this is what we're going to do. This is the only amount I will allow to be used for this purpose. This other amount, I'm not going to talk to you about it and don't ask me because I will not answer you. I love you. I don't want to hide things from you. I don't want to lie to you. But honey, you need to wake up. Ah, you don't know my husband. Hey, he will come with one story. He will come. That's why I said get strong. Grow up. When he comes up, look into his eyes and say, honey, I meant what I said. I won't budge. What if God tell, I'll tell you the truth. When God understands what you are doing, he would walk with you. So when your husband looks at you and says, are you, are you serious? Say, yeah, I'm serious. The chances are, he will wake up. He says, no, ah, what if he does it? He will now destroy my marriage. Why? You know, I always say this to people. Why are you struggling to keep what God is not keeping? When people tell me, I, yeah, my marriage will break. Why are you afraid of your marriage breaking? No, 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 no. As long as you are not foolish enough to do things that would destroy your marriage. If you're doing what is right, why don't you trust God that his hand is under that marriage? He will hold it. Now, because many people are too afraid to take this risk, you say, no, yeah, hey, hmm, I better leave it like that. Too. Then you continue in that problem. You continue changing. You continue lying. And guess what's going to happen? You have been that good, honest wife that your husband sees. And one day he discovers you're hiding money from him. One day he discovers you're telling lies. Guess what? He may not tell you that he has found out. But you see, he has found iniquity in you. I tell you the truth. Now, I counsel people in marriages. And this is very true. The moment a spouse is demystified in the eyes of her spouse or his spouse, the moment that good wife, the husband, finds iniquity in her, Satan is going to use that knowledge, that revelation, to churn every evil he can get out of that man. And guess what? Silently, he'll be telling himself, after all, she's not completely honest. You guys have not, he has not confronted you, but that's what he's telling himself. After all, she's not completely honest. I know she's lying to me. Only God knows how many more things she's hiding from me. I even wonder if I know this, my wife. So she wants to play this game. We will play it very well. So two people think they are okay 
Five years have gone down the drain. Guess what's happening? Their lives are just going apart like this. And the day they will now confront themselves, maybe it's 10 years later, and by then everything is broken. It would have been saved if you took charge from the beginning. Same thing with the husband. You notice something about your wife, face it, deal with it, and be strong to deal with it. And time is up. Praise God. Why am I sharing all this? Because God loves you. That's why you can face truth. Father, I thank you. By your mighty hand, Lord, you're bringing healing and great succor to your children. And we bless you for this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.